Thank you for joining today's webinar, Financial Reporting Best Practices. Just as a reminder, participants will receive an email with three business days with access to their certificate of completion for CPE credit. You will see your webinar pane in front of you. Please note that the orange arrow will allow you to minimize or maximize the pane. If it is minimized, simply click on the orange arrow to bring it back. Feel free to submit any questions that you have for our presenters throughout the duration of our webinar. Our presenters will handle questions at the end as time permits. If you're using your telephone to listen in on the webinar, please make sure you select Use Telephone. If you're listening through your computer speakers, please select Use Mic and Speakers. If you have the incorrect setting selected, it will produce an echo sound. To qualify for California CE, you must use a computer and log in with your own information and unique URL, be logged into our online software for at least 50 consecutive minutes within the scheduled time frame of the webinar, actively respond to at least 75% of the polling questions, and complete the evaluation survey at the end of the webinar. With that, I would like to present our presenters for today. First off, we have John Dunnigan, who's a partner in our CFO Advisory Services of Armadino. John has over 30 years of <clears throat> financial executive experience and has held various positions, including CFO and VP of Finance. John's background includes um, extensive management, financial, and operation skills in various different industries. Thank you. Next, we have Brian Rogers, who's a senior manager with our CFO Advisory Services. Brian has over 25 years of financial executive experience and has held positions such as Principal, VP of Finance, as well as Director of Finance. Ba Brian's background includes extensive experience in FP&A um, while working for multi-billion dollar companies as well as a consultant for Adaptive Insights. And with that, I'd like to highlight some of our learning objectives today. At the end of today's webinar, participants will be able to identify the latest trends and tips of financial reporting, discover better ways to collaborate, collaborate on reports with your team, get a sense of superior data vis visualizations, and create efficient ways to report on key business trends. The structure of our presentation will follow um, this order. We'll kick off with the CFO evolution, then we'll jump into optimizing financial reporting processes as well as discover some best practices in report design. So with that, I'll give it to John. Thank you, Satosh. I'd like to spend just a few minutes talking about the CFO evolution. This is a result of, the CFO evolution is a result of surveys Armanino has been doing for a number of years, talking to CFOs, VP finance controllers um, at many companies across not only the San Francisco Bay Area, but throughout the country and asking them questions about kind of what's important to them and how they see their role. On the left side of the screen, you can see one of the questions we ask is how CFO organizations currently allocate their time and where they spend their time. And the survey has been pretty consistent for the last four or five years that about 55% of the organization's time is spent in what we refer to as the accountant role, which is really the basic blocking and tackling, doing reconciliations, kind of the kind of the, really the core elements of what an accounting organization does. It's really producing the, the financial statements at a, at a basic level and closing the books. About 20% of the time is spent in the protector role, which we define generally as internal controls. For public companies, it involves Sarbanes-Oxley. Uh, it essentially means no surprises. It's really making sure the finance organization knows what's going on, has good control over the assets, liabilities, and financial reporting. And it, Currently, they spend about 25% of their time, on average, in really the leadership role of the finance organization or the leadership role within the company. That's really working with the C-suite executives. It's the CFO dealing with board members. It's setting business direction. It's looking at new products, new markets, uh, M&A type activities. It's really kind of helping drive the organization forward as opposed to the account role, which is really being a scorekeeper. Interestingly, very consistently for the last few years, when we asked the same, same group how they would like to be spending their time, the percentages really kind of flip on their heads. The amount of time that people want to spend really focused on the basic accounting 
roles really drops about 30 uh, percent. And the time spent in, as a CFO organization in leadership activities increases to about 50 percent. Not terribly surprising. Um, working in leadership role and kind of really looking forward, to driving the business forward is, is a much more interesting and much more valuable activity than kind of closing the books. Clearly closing the books is, you know, the price of admission. You need to do that. You need to do it well. You need to do it efficiently. Uh, but really not where people want to be spending a lot of their time. What we really try to do uh, as our Armanino Consulting is really kind of help organizations make that transition. And it's really working with people, process, and technology to really help companies do that. And if we can help you do that, um, it's better for you as an organization. It's better for your, for your, for your job interest, for what you want to do. And it's clearly better for the company because finance needs to be a key partner in the companies looking forward and driving the business forward. Uh, today we're going to spend some time talking about one aspect of, of how that happens, and that's really around the financial reporting, because that clearly is a key element in how the finance reaches out, reaches out to the rest of the organization, how the rest of the organization perceives finance. Okay, so one of, the, one of the first questions is always, so where are you in the finance, in the role of finance, or where does finance fit within the organization? Pretty consistently, a lot of, a lot of different organizations have done different studies, have set up essentially this, these type of four steps. They might vary a little bit, but essentially most organizations go through kind of this, this process, uh, starting out very much with the, with the accountants, with the accountant role, uh, very transaction-oriented, um, it's very dominated by the, the, the accounting system and really kind of heads down closing the books. Um, then moving up into the organization um, because much more FP&A focused, financial planning and analysis, uh, really kind of focused much more on reporting, minimizing risks, looking at variances, where the business is headed, and really kind of getting control of the business beyond just kind of closing the transactions. Then you essentially want to move into the business partner's decision support role which is really kind of beginning to make that transition to business leadership. It's much more focused on planning and analysis, uh, getting into rolling forecasts, performance management, uh, really looking at key drivers of the business and really how to drive the business forward, ultimately then becoming business leaders, uh, really kind of being looked to by the, everyone in the management organization, the C-suite of executives, as really kind of a key element of really how to drive the business and really have a lot of input and value to the business and being perceived as being valuable throughout the whole organization. Clearly, that's where we all want to be. That's where you want your finance organization to be. And that's really kind of the, the goal of among, among the other activities, the financial reporting we're doing today. So one of the, one of the key elements of this is, is really kind of how the business, the various business elements are linked around the financial plan, financial reporting. Uh, clearly, this is it's a, it's an ongoing circle. Uh, you have the sales pipeline and forecasts lead to manufacturing plans, lead to logistics, lead to workforce planning, lead to marketing and sales generation, and the circle just continues on and on. But it very much all revolves around the finance, the financial plan, financial reporting, uh, both in terms of the actual results, uh, kind of that account role we talked about, I talked about a bit, but also more and more in really kind of the leadership role and, and financial reporting, how that's presented to the rest of the business. So they really understand the business and how it, how the financial, financials impact, impact the business and how the various business units impact the financials. They're very much interrelated. And the goal, one of the key goals of finance is to make, is to help the management team and the rest of the company really understand that. All right. And with that, let's kick off into our first polling question. How many days does it take your company to go from the monthly close to distribution of your monthly results? Is it A, one to three days, B, four to six days, C, seven to ten days, D, ten plus days, or E, not sure? Just as a reminder, you must pull 75% of our questions today to qualify for CE credit. We'll give you just a few more moments to make your selections. We're about 90% voted now, so we're almost there. All right, great. Let's take a look at the results. All 
All right, so a good majority is in 10 plus days, John. Okay, that's not very surprising, but clearly something we really want to focus on and probably a good reason for uh, attending today. Um, ideally, you really want to be in the, in the four to six days. That's really kind of where you want to drive the organization to be. Uh, a couple days to close the books, kind of one to three days to get closed, a couple days to really get the financial results out. The objective, of course, is to get the results out as fast as possible because any information is relevant. The longer the period goes, especially if you're over 10 days, uh, the information really becomes pretty stale and is less useful to management. Clearly, we want to have the information very, very quickly, get it into their hands as quickly as possible. So really, management can really then act on the, act on the results and, and move forward quickly. If, it's, if, it's, if you're talking 10 plus days, 15 days or more, uh, the information really is not, is not as valuable because it's just harder to act on and you can't, you can't react as well. So, yeah, we'll see what we can do about helping you move up on the, on the scale there. Okay, we're waiting for the, the screen to reappear here. Apo apologize for the <laughs> delay. <laughs> All right, we'll give it a sec. Pulling up the PowerPoint presentation now. Okay. Here we go. All right, Brian, we'll hand it off to you. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Sir Taj. Thanks, All right, here we go. Well, back. Here we go. Yeah, so we've, we've got a, a lot of people that are in the seven-plus day, you know, close to reports um, kind of time frame, and I think I think that's, that's interesting, and I think there's probably a lot of reasons for that. Um, but when you look at, you know, how to optimize your time from closing your books to really getting your reports out. I think there's really four things that, that come to mind. One is, you know, it's your chart of accounts. How does that look and are you optimizing a, a natural chart of account structure with dimensions? And I'll give you an example of what I mean with that in a minute. Um, is your ERP seamlessly integrated with reporting? You know, can you, can you move the data quickly or is there a lot of manipulation in between? I think I think when you're seeing numbers like that, there's probably a lot of data manipulation that happens between closing the books and actually putting a report together. Um, and one of the things that really helps that is, of course, having a pre-configured set of reports just ready to go. Every time you, you close the month, you just hit a button and you, you, uh, you're ready to run reports. And I'll demonstrate some of that in a minute. Um, and also, you know, giving your team really access to online reports. Um, you know, I, my past, I mean, we, we spent an awful lot of time, you know, taking the data from the GL, from our operating system, whatever, putting them into a massive Excel uh, exhibits and cranking out these reports and then distributing it. Uh, if you've got the right solution, you should be able to give everybody a self-service access as soon as that information is available. And we'll show you what that can look like in just a minute. So next. So when, when you're looking at your chart of accounts structure, and we see this all the time, and, and if you're coming from QuickBooks or maybe an old legacy system, this is, this is quite common. So let's take, for example, you have, you have an account, a GL account. It's $1,500 for equipment. Well, that's the natural account, but you've got other account segments. So you've got a location, you've got a department, you've got a project associated with that account. Well, and if you hit the next build here slide, you'll see, you know, the GL account structure on the right there, you know, you're going to have 75 different account code combinations for equipment. And if you're trying to summarize results by location, by department, by project, if you're trying to do any of these things on the fly real quick in real time, you're probably having to do an awful lot of data manipulation. You might be taking this data, bringing it into Excel, creating VLOOKUPs, uh, doing some, you know, some uh, some pivot tables. Maybe you're going to access, doing some of that stuff. It's not a very efficient and repeatable process. You can do it, you can get it done, but then, okay, now I've got the data in the right format. Now I need to present it in a way that makes sense, and that's another part of the of the process. So I think when you when you look at past seven days, and you know, like John was showing in the, in the role of finance, the one two, I think. 
a lot of the reasons why companies are stuck in those one and two stages is because they've got a GL structure that really isn't optimized by dimension. If these locations, departments, and projects are all dimensionalized, and you've only got one set of natural accounts, I just have one equipment account here and not 75. And as you can see, and I'll demonstrate in a minute, you know, it makes it very efficient to run reports and, uh, and show the results of the month. Next slide. So, yeah, so click through those. So, so yeah, so the next thing really needs to happen is, is a very critical component, and that is integrating your trial balance from your ERP, from your GL system, into your reporting system. Now, some, some of you might do reporting out of your ERP. Maybe you need, you know, as I'll demonstrate, a, a budgeting solution. But whatever it is, you need to take that confirmed closed month, the trial balance, and have a way to integrate it you know, automatically into the next stage of reporting. And that may include things like transaction level detail. And we often see operational level detail, HR data, CRM data, you know, what's the pipeline detail, you know, what's the forecasted sales, you know, coming into the next quarter. Those need to be, you know, all those items, anything that you develop for a key performance indicator, that should be a part of how you report your monthly results. Next slide. And, and when, you look, when you talk about integrating all your data sources, um, it's really important to, you know, look at the whole universe of, of all your data that you need in the company and what the sources are. You know, your budgets and your actuals need to be dynamically connected. You've got to have a linkage between subscription billing and your core financials, your CRM, transactions, your e-procurement. All these systems and their their data needs to be, you know, connected in a way that the month closes or as the month's developing even, these systems are talking to one another. And that really lets you optimize the value of each of these systems while not slowing you down when it comes to reporting because they're they're communicated, they're integrated with one another. You save a lot of time, gives you a lot of insight right away when the month closes. Thanks. So on the, on the polling question, Sir Tash, you're up. Yeah, so let's launch the second polling question. <clears throat> How are you currently doing your monthly reporting? So is it A, Excel, B, are you using a web application, might be something like Adaptive Insights or Host Analytics, C, do you have an on-premise application, so maybe something like Hyperion, Management Reporter, FRX. Or is it D, you're not currently doing any monthly reports? We'll give you just a few moments to make your selections. Please make sure you are pulling your selections to receive CE credit. All right. With that, let's go ahead and close the poll. Okay, so Excel is leading. It's, it's, I'm not sure. It, it, it's leading, but I'm not sure I would say it's winning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, cl clearly, most people still using Excel. Not at all surprising. That is absolutely yeah. true across every survey you, we see. Uh, people like Excel because it's got a lot of advantages of being, you know, easy and it feels feels very inexpensive. But it can be, but it's very very inefficient, as we'll talk a bit further down. Um. Our uh, survey software is not behaving at all today. Uh, mm -hmm. Web applications was about 10%, a um, little lower than I would have thought, actually. Usually we see it a little bit higher than that. Um, On-premise on at uh, 34% is not terribly surprising. I mean, this, the system, the, the old enterprise systems of Hyperion, Cognos, uh, Management Reporter, a lot of people still using FRX, even though uh, Microsoft has discontinued support of it and it's no longer active actively being supported it's still very very common so not real not real surprising answers uh, particularly with uh, with Excel and we're gonna jump back to so I, I apologize for the for the problems with the software it's just one of those things today um, so we're gonna jump back to uh, Brian and talk a little bit about some uh, demonstration and reporting yeah very good John thanks yeah you know just kind of finishing the whole topic on uh, Excel, let's make sure this is uh, 
Everybody looking at my screen here? Well, it looks like it's rendering as I speak. Very good. Okay, great. <clears throat> yeah, so Excel, I mean, you, you look at Excel, I mean, it's, I use it every day. I mean, it's a, it's a great personal productivity tool, but it really isn't a collaborative, you know, solution to, to help uh, run your business. Uh, so what I've done here, I've logged in as an executive to an adaptive insights and demonstration model. I've gone over to these little navigation panes over here, and I've clicked on reports. And you can see it refresh. What, what we do and what we advise uh, in, in this solution and, and probably other solutions, you would do the same. But you know, get a very good organized set of folders to put reports that you're going to run on a regular basis. But those reports that you really want to see and you're going to look at when the month closes, well, put those in a, in a folder called favorites, let's just say. And that's out there. That's available. So the month is closed. I can easily just click on my metric scorecard, and I can pull that up. And it's not only got financial you know, data in here, but you can see I've loaded headcount. I've got ratios, cost per employee, average sales price. And I've also got some a logic behind the scenes that will tell me, hey, this is a trend that's, that's bad, this is a trend that's good. You give me some ideas of things that I might want to look at. But I'll have some financial metrics. I want to figure out my cash ratio, my gross margin. Um, and I want to be able to select different months. I mean, that was, that was March. Maybe I want to see what February looks like. Then I can easily refresh and see how that looks. So this could be one of many reports that you would have, and you can add notes. Um, but let me show you some more. So again, you've closed the month. Now, a lot of times, I know in my past, I used to submit, uh, close the books and submit Excel files to, to you know, all the department managers. Um, and they'd be generally the same, you know, maybe they'd be the same worksheet uh, duplicated for every different level of organization in the company. Um, now you can do that kind of thing right here in, in this solution, in Adaptive, where let's say that you've got a month and a year to date variances to budget. You've, you've got the same kind of uh, analysis here with, a, with icons and, and highlights where you might say, look, anytime I see a red flag because the variance is out of pattern, I'm going to need a note on this report. But you can make this available to your management team, and they can have access only at their given level of, of responsibility. So, you know, if I'm looking at the United States results, well, then I just pull up the U.S. version of this. And again, if I want to change, I want to change the month, and maybe I want to look at February. Hit the green arrow. All the notes, everything else changes. And I've got, you know, a very clean report. And you know, this is a kind of solution too. You know, if you love Excel, you can still use Excel. You can you can export this to Excel to a PDF. Uh, we advise our clients though, as, as much as they can, you know, use these HTML reports in your meetings. You know, you could eliminate a lot of the Excel book creations uh, if you got you know really accustomed to using a solution like this. And here's some more some more reports. Maybe you want to look at the at the trend in expenses. You want the report to to uh, give you a three month average. Compare the current month to that three month average. Maybe you want to compare it to the six month average. Again, put some notes down here, and we could select you know any given level of the organization or a different time period if we wanted to do that. And here's some other uh, reports that we've seen quite a bit. Maybe you want to do a rolling 12-month report where you can you can pick your starting month, give yourself 12 months, add it up, compare it to the next couple of months. It's out of the way, and you can have that available again as soon as the month updates. Add notes. And you can easily save these reports and call them something else. Maybe you have a product P&L report. Gives you 
a quick look at you know what's my what's my gross margin by product uh, after the month is closed. And 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 for those that you know still want to keep Excel, well we can deal with that. We can we can embed Excel into uh, Adaptive, and we can make it you know a, a template that you've populated. So in this example, this company has a monthly financial package that they've already you know like pretty well, and they've got a P and L, they've got a, a balance sheet, they've got a cash flow. They've got some metrics, and they've got perhaps a chart. What we end up doing then is making it so that our our solution, Adaptive Insights in this case, populates this report data tab and populates these uh, sheets that have already been established by the company. So you might want to have a mixture of both when you report your results, things that are available you know, as an HTML and others that are connected to uh, to an Excel exhibit. If I get back into the solution, I'll also show how you know if you have a reporting package in PowerPoint, you could also save that in the solution and have it be uh, linked up with the, the actual data and create this kind of a package as an example. The key is having having the structure in place where you can easily move your your trial balance, your actuals, and any other metrics that make sense into a solution like this. You might have, and I'll show you some more graphics in a minute, but you might have just some basic trends that you want to see when a month closes. What's my revenue per employee, my cost per employee on a monthly basis? In this. And this could be a planned version that includes actuals and budget periods. So I've got actuals right here through March, and I've got my plan levels April and beyond. But you know, you could get a really good picture of your business uh, by looking at this. And one other quick one, maybe you want to see, you know, you want to have a big gauge on your your service bookings. So this is, you know, what happens through March. Maybe you again got a budget, and you want to see well. That's actuals through March. Our plan, you know, is to be about four and a half million. You know, how far are we going? You know, you can certainly change these ranges, but something like this can give those individuals that are much more visual, um, you know, the quick data that they need uh, to really understand what's happened in the month. And that's what I have for reports for the moment, Sartaj. Back right. to you. Great. Thanks, Brian. With that, mm -hmm. let's jump into our third polling question for today. The polling question is, do you have a data visualization or BI, business intelligence solution, deployed in your organization? The first option is yes, it is Excel-based. Second is yes, it's solution-based. Uh, C is considering it, you're thinking about getting a solution. Or D is no, not currently. We'll give you a few moments to make your selections. And just as a reminder, we will have a recording of this webinar and the slide deck available to share with you after 48 hours of this presentation. Give you a few more minutes to make your selections. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and close the poll. So it looks like we have a majority of 46% saying no, you guys do not currently have a BI solution deployed. Uh, I think that's that's not not terribly surprising that most of the do are using Excel. Uh, you know, data visualization is, is, is a big, uh, a hot topic these days in terms of how to do that, uh, what's the best way to do it. A lot of companies are, are really beginning to focus on it, but it's still fairly, uh, a lot of companies still aren't doing it yet. 
So it's an area where, where a lot of companies are looking to how to improve a tremendous amount of data they have and really how to visit that, how to, how to see that and what, what they can do with it. Um, so so a few, we have a few questions um, before we kind of jump into, into the BI a bit. Um, it, Brian, so when we're talking about the reports, a couple key elements I think we just might want to spend a few minutes talking about in terms of the, in terms of the reporting. We're looking at it specifically around Excel, but I think a couple of the key things we want we want to really highlight in, in response to a few questions and comments is is kind of the consistent um, themes I guess that, that run through the reports and, and what a few of those might be. Uh, I think one of the key ones is when we're when you're distributing reports, whether it's in a, in, we, were, we were showing adaptive as, as an example, uh, but even if you're using Excel or, or whatever you're using. Um, you know, the, the couple of the keys are first to have, you know, uniform definitions across all your reports. Because uh, then no matter what organization, what department within your organization you're, you're, you're talking to or you're focused on, you're sending reports to, it's very important that, that everyone be looking at the same reports. The advantage, of course, of, of the, the tools like Adaptive is that you'll, that becomes very easy. But even in Excel, um, where, where, where that can fall down very quickly is if you have different people looking at different reports, uh, or have different definitions of, of within reports. Um, it is very important, that one of the key things to really streamline the reporting process is to have a standard set of reports. So when you're talking about, for instance, if you're talking about sales, everyone is talking about sales means the same thing to everyone, everyone's looking at the same number. Um, this webinar is, is almost all finance people, uh, so as you're probably well aware, if you talk to your, your folks, your, your brethren over in the sales department, you know, their definition of what a sale is is probably a whole lot different than what you think of as a sale. You know, to your typical salesperson, you know, if they have a signed contract, they got a sale. They're not worried about revenue recognition. They're not worried about um, whether the product is actually shipped. They're not worried about any of those kind of, you know, whether customers paid. Uh, they're not worried about any of those, any of those kind, of, kind of details. They've got a signed contract. They've got a sale. Um, so when you're talking about sales, it's very important that, you know, that there's a single definition of sales, which a uniform reporting does. Same thing is true with you know headcount. Whether you're talking about you know talking about employees, contractors, full-time, part-time, however you define those things, having that uniform definition across all departments is very very critical. Uh, likewise, the, the mechanism for providing feedback, which which we saw in the slides, is is also very important. Um, a way to do that very quickly and easily uh, really enables the finance team to pull together information to uh, provide management with the information feedback they need to really understand what's driving the numbers. Uh, by distributing reports in a consistent format across all organizations and then getting the information back from those organizations in terms of variance explanations, uh, why departments are hitting their numbers, why certain numbers are happening, whatever the, whatever the case may be, uh, getting that information back timely and quickly and in a uniform and consistent format is very important because that's the only way you're going to turn around and get your information out uh, in, in, a, in, a quick, in a quick way. I mean, clearly, if, if, if you need to spend a lot of time kind of pulling together information from a lot of different types of reports, a lot of uh, miscellaneous information, it just slows the process down and doesn't add a lot of value. Uh, to really focus on, on, you know, time to value, spending very little time and getting the most value, uh, it's important to have that uniform, uniform reporting, uniform feedback, uh, and very consistent look and cross look and feel across all the reports. Uh, Brian, you have any uh, other comments you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, it's just you know, again, it, it kind of comes down and starts with the the fundamental structure of your data, and making sure that you know maybe you've got different entities, different businesses, but if you can get them to to, to share the same chart of accounts, the same you know structural elements, um, that's really really important because. Once you start, you know, continuing, and we see this with <clears throat> companies that acquire different businesses. You know, everybody's got a different way to, to skin the cat on their chart of accounts and and other business items. But the more you can standardize at least the structural elements, the better it's going to be, and the easier it's going to be to uh, to provide this kind of analysis and reports. And it makes it a whole lot easier too to troubleshoot when there's a problem in your system if you know, you're, you're speaking out of the same, you know, book between businesses as well. I think that's right. I think really the kind of the third element to it then is, is also having the data integration across the various mm -hmm. systems. Uh, you know, a lot of our clients have, have a lot of trouble with 
you touched on this bit, Brian. Uh, if you need to pull data from various systems, you know, we don't always you don't always have all your operational data in your general ledger. Like often you do not. Uh, so often, you know, pulling together information that's meaningful to management is not just the pure financial numbers, but also a lot of operating statistics. You know, unit, whether it be units sold, um, uh, you know, number number uh, the headcount numbers, uh, unit you know, unit bookings, sales, shipments. Um, you know, inventory quantities and levels, um, you know, headcount, whatever, whatever information is you, your organization is looking at. Um, being able to pull all that information into, your, into a single uh, reporting system or a single location uh, quickly and easily is, is critical. I mean, if you need to download that to Excel, run pivot tables on it, sort it out, pull together reports, uh, you know, combine reports, that's just it's a, it's not an efficient process, and that's really going to drive you to being that over that ten days. And as we talked about at the beginning of the first survey question, really kind of driving to that, um, you know, getting reports out to management in kind of that you know five or six day time period so that the information is current and relevant is really going to make the difference. And and that's the other kind of really the key element is really having that data integration across all of your systems. Um, you know, Excel is a great way to manipulate data, but but it's not the best necessarily the best best medium for moving data from one system to another. Yeah, and I, and I think the other the other kind of item too is just trying to keep it as simple as you possibly can and aggregate accounts and put together groupings where it makes sense. You see a lot of a lot of clients trying to plan and and report on really granular levels of detail where. That's not adding a lot of a lot of value. It's it's definitely adding time to the process, but it's not adding a lot of value. So you need to be you need to be careful with that and make sure that you've got a, a structure that's clean and simple, and uh, you know easy to easy to manipulate. All right, so, with that, let's jump into the next slide. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> so you know, collaborating with your management team, and I think this is where. You know, Excel has its its challenges as well because we see this all the time. You've got one or two people that are that are excellent with Excel, and they've got maybe they've got some very good models, and and it does exactly what you want. But but what happens when that person you know moves on, gets promoted, leaves the company, um, and how is that data easily shared? You know, throughout the organization, is that something you know others can pick up pretty easily and understand, or is that you know? take a lot of time and same kind of thing with you know your KPIs and graphical you know visual form you know you don't want to send a an Excel you know file that requires a lot of understanding and and um, you know understanding of as to what is behind it and how this works and the calculations you want to be able to produce reports and and data visualizations that are very easy to see what's going on and where where the business is at and uh, why don't I, I think I've got, why don't I show my screen here, Sartosh? All right. So an example of, of some of the things that, you know, you might be able to do in a data visualization, you know, you might have something along these lines where you've got, you know, let me, let me know, I want to know what's going on with the P&L. What's the scorecard? You know, how are the variances? Where do they stand? You know, and if you can make something like this a very easily accessible self-service tool, yeah, you can really make you know reporting, and it's really dissemination of information to your team is what you're you're trying to achieve, not necessarily a, a Word or a Excel you know worksheet. Um, you want to tell them, you know, hey, here's what's going on, and and have it be something that's again very manipulative by organization. So I'm looking at the total company. Maybe I want to see what the total operations are doing. I want to maybe look at the United States. Any given level of of data, you know, whatever solution it is, you're going to want to have, you know, all of this data in one spot and be able to say, hey, this is what's going on with the business. I've closed the books, I've got all my operating data in here, and now I can see, you know, here are some of the trends. And um, and it will, you know, show some other things, like in, in finance. Um, 
revenue trends. You know, we might have other things that you're going to, let me change the time period here, excuse me. So we might have, you know, we might want to be looking at, at your product sales by geography. Maybe you want service sales, you want some bar graphs, you want, you know, a gauge that tells you what's going on. But you want to also be able to drill into, you know, what's behind this number. How did we get to, you know, what's behind the U.S. revenue number for the month of March? You know, what given division was driving that? And if you're able to put your information together in one spot, you're, you're able to create, you know, these kind of things that are, uh, are real effective. But these, these views in the solution can be tailor-made. You know, you might have stuff, you know, maybe there's an HR view. Let me get back to March because that's where I have my data. Um, you might have an HR view where, you know, somebody who's the head of HR, this is what they, they want to see on a monthly basis. Give me the accounts. Let me see the variances to the budget. Um, what's the revenue and employee uh, expense per employee looks like? Or maybe you want to have some trend lines on your staffing. Headcount actuals, full-time equivalents. You know, have have a all-in-one solution where you're able to really get your information out to the masses. You know, whether they're on a you know on a PC or an iPad or what have you, make it so that you know they're not waiting two you know seven to ten days after the close to get an Excel report. There's there's more uh, efficient ways to do that. But I think the key is you know an optimal structure with you know data integrated uh, amongst your sources. So a couple other. Uh, any uh, comments on that? Yeah. Yeah, just a couple other other thoughts when when kind of putting these putting these together, putting this, the power the uh, the dashboards together. Uh, of course, the, the key to the dashboard and what you're really trying to to drive here is is really give management at a quick glance, let them know what the things are they need to focus on, um, and and it's really you know the visualization of, of a dashboard does it very very nicely. And what you're looking at now, you can see. Um, you know the recruiting your recruiting account has got a big red X on it. You know, kind of lets management right, right away know that's something I got to be looking at um, in this particular case. You know, green checks I don't have to worry about those right now. They're they're on they're on track. They're in they're in, within budget. Um, so really, the, that's really the key key advantage of of a dashboard of this kind of visualization is really to give people a very quick sight of what's important, uh, what they need to focus on, and really kind of so they can. It, you know, they, can, they may want to drill into a lot of other things, but you know, you want to make sure that people are spending time on the things that matter, and the things of, and identifying any, if there's any issues or problems. Um, along that along that line, what's really important here, where we spend a lot of time with our clients and putting these together, is really understanding what the key drivers of the business are, um, because that's what you want the dashboards to focus on. If if the you know if the key drivers if you have the key drivers on the on the dashboard, then management's really going to get the information they need quickly, um, and they're really going to be focused on, on the right things. Um, as you can see, yeah, so, so is the slide, the, uh, the screen Brian's bringing up here. I mean, here's some, some key numbers that, you know, might be, might be key drivers of the business. Um, but some of the things, you know, take the time. So you want to take the time to work with management, work with the CEO, uh, you know, the chief marketing officer, uh, chief information officer, you know your your engineers, you know supply warehouse folks, but whatever whatever industry you're in is really kind of understanding what it is they need to be looking at, what are the things they need to be focused on, and really kind of get those on the dashboard. And that's really what you want to want to be focusing on. Uh, you know some things we see very commonly, um, you know in addition to kind of the basic sales results or results here at gross margin, um, EBITDA. You know. Very often you see things like uh, you know the, the sales pipeline is something people are often very interested in. Um, you know most companies have a basic funnel model that they they work from. It's a little different from all each business might have its own, but fundamentally everyone's got a process where they go from a, you know from a, from a leader from an early lead you know all the way down through the, the various stages of the sales process all the way down to a closed sale. Um, and kind of laying those out on a dashboard is often very very useful for for sales, but also gives a great indication. Of, of uh, bookings and future revenue, 
Uh, you know, a lot of our, you know, a lot of the companies on this on this uh, webinar I know are technology-based companies, so you often end up with a lot of uh, deferred revenue, um, and and kind of those the bookings and uh, you know deferred revenue kind of numbers are really kind of key to management understanding what what the requirements are. Um, of course, aging reports, accounts receivable, you know, everyone always, you know, cash is king. People always want to know what the cash are. And the flip side of that, too, what the accounts payable looks like. Um, so we know not only what the, uh, what cash we expect to bring in, but also where, where, we, uh, where it's going to be going. Um, other key things folks are looking at is inventory levels. If you're, if you're a company that, that sells products, inventory levels, supply pipeline, uh, back orders, are all, are all key items to really understand if you've got an issue. Uh, manufacturing, uh, and if you're in a manufacturing environment, there's a lot of key, key drivers there you want to be looking at. Um, so it really is it's very company, it's very, very company specific. Every company is a little different. Um, but you do want to make sure you're spending the time understanding the drivers so that you're really kind of focused on the things that, that are going to drive the business and the things that not finance cares about so much although clearly that's important, but it's really understanding and take the time to talk to the other executives, the other senior manager of the company, and understand what it is they care about. Um, not only will that then give you dashboards that are meaningful, but quite honestly, then good for you because it will help make you a key part, you know, kind of a, a key source of information for them, and, be, and you're providing a lot of value to them, which, which is very, very important. Right. I mean, that, and that gets back to, you know, the, the stage of the role of finance. If you're moving toward that number four, that partnering with the team as opposed to, you know, finance is just in their little corner producing their things. They're a key part of the, the management team, you know, helping to drive change and, and make better business decisions. Absolutely. All right. So let's jump into polling question number four with that. You should see it appearing on your screen. So the question is, who is who in your company receives the financial reports? So is it getting sent out to, and you can select as many as apply, is it um, getting out to finance, finance and senior executives only, senior ge executives in the board, department managers, sales, as well as operational department managers? So go ahead and select as many as apply to your organization. Really, the, 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 the goal here is to get a sense of you know, who is reading your reports and um, how many of the key people it's circulating with. I'll give you just a few more moments to make your selections. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and close the poll. So I guess some obvious results here, right? Definitely senior executives in the board, as well as finance and senior executives as well. Little, little, little surprising um, for me is that uh, the, the fact that sales and the operating departments are not, by and large, getting a lot of the information. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think that you know you might you might want to think about that and and, and kind of ask the question of yourself and of them is, is the information that you have relevant to them and are you providing the information they need? Uh, typically, both of those organizations are very, very data driven and a lot of that data is available to the finance department. Um, you know, I suspect, you know, sales very well may be using Microsoft CRM or they might be using Salesforce or they might be using one of those other tools. Um, but that data really should be incorporated into the financial information and bringing a lot, bringing that lot of information in because it really ties into everything else you do because you know that information is, is largely a leading indicator of where the business is going. Um, likewise, the operating departments and managers, uh, you know, they're probably looking at a lot of the data that's in their, um, whether it's in their manufacturing system, their inventory systems, um, for software companies in their product in their product development pipelines. Uh, but again, you want to bring a lot of information in so really everyone in the company is looking at the same data and you're really providing senior management with a really kind of a single source of truth that everybody, everybody can agree on and, and really, become, really become useful information. Brian, do you have something you wanted to? Yeah, you know, and it, I was just kind of add to that. I mean, it's, 
it gets past just the financial reports too. You want to get to this, get to the point where everybody's kind of on board with the latest month, but they want to know, you know, what are the three or four different scenarios of, of things that we have going on that will affect our results moving forward. I mean, you want to know where the ship is heading, not where you've been as much. And uh, you certainly need to understand what happened in the month, and that's, that's critical, but it's, it's very critical that you do that quickly, but then you turn that into, well, what does that mean as an assumption or a driver or, a, you know, a, the update of our rolling forecast as an example? I mean, what does that mean for the business moving forward uh, is really what you want to get out of that as opposed to just disseminating a report with a variance. Um, you definitely want to turn that into actionable information. Okay. I, yeah, you're absolutely right, Brian. It, it, it's very having useful information is, is really kind of kind of the key. Um, to really having the information, the, the financial information, the financial statements uh, reports be, being useful to, to management, and it's really kind of identifying what those are. Um, so, so kind of kind of by way of beginning to kind of kind of wrap some of this up. Um, you know, we talked about a lot of these things, but you know, using a tool for financial reporting. And I don't want to, I don't mean to say I want picking on Excel. Um, I mean, Excel is a great tool. I use it every day, but it's not necessarily the best tool for collaborative reporting. Um, you know, kind of the, some of the advantage of having a tool, whatever whatever it is you use, is really kind of the, we talked about the, you know the need for uniform, consistent reporting, the ability to distribute information very quickly. Um, you know, eliminate a lot of data errors uh, that spreadsheets can introduce. Um, really, kind of focus on analyzing data and not just kind of crunching numbers and, and consolidating spreadsheets. Um, gives you a lot more efficiency and flexibility and really kind of max, minimize the opportunities for, for human error and reporting by having kind of those standard set, set of reports that we're, we're all looking about. So, so Brian, you know, I'm not going to spend much time on this. Uh, real quickly, Brian, you know, we, he was using Adaptive Insights. I know we got a bunch of questions about specifically around Adaptive Insights, uh, which may not be applicable to everyone, so I won't go into the specific questions on it, but but clearly, it's a tool we like. That's why we use it, because um, we find that it is, kind of meets all the requirements we talked about, as you can kind of see here, particularly compared to the, uh, the big enterprise systems, big legacy systems, and, and uh, Excel. I mean, like I said, I love Excel. I'm a big user, but it's not necessarily the most collaborative tool, tool out there. Um, so so one, real, one last kind of quick slide on, on adaptive, um, you know, because uh, we do use it because it is, it is you know, self-service kind of on-demand on system. It uh, provides a lot of flexibility, and we, can, we integrate with a lot of our different uh, general ledger systems that we work with, as well as a lot of the operating systems, the non-accounting operating systems from Salesforce to, um, to payroll systems to operating systems to uh, Microsoft CRM uh, to a lot, a lot of other types, types of systems. Thanks, John. Um, so just to wrap up, you know, we covered some of the key topics here, um, including tips and trends in financial reporting, developing superior data visualization, as well as more efficient ways to report on key business trends. Um, maybe what we can do now is take a couple questions. We have a few minutes left, so if you have any questions you'd like to ask John or Brian around um, best practices within your organization for financial reporting, please uh, go ahead and, and add them to the webinar pane. We'll take them as they come in. Okay. Um, there are some, you know, some of the questions are very specific around adaptive, which I, which I don't know that I want to actually go into on, on, this, um, on this webinar. Uh, that said, uh, if you want to contact us, we certainly can answer any specific questions around that. Very happy to do that. Um, most of the other questions we have really kind of deal around um, non-financial uh, information that, that management is looking for, that, whether finance should be providing that. And we talked about some of that non-financial being, you know, kind of the, not the classic general ledger uh, trial balance type information. A um, number of questions around, around sourcing that and providing that information. Um, I think that that's, as we've talked about a little bit, that is, I think, very important. Uh, to to finance to the financial reporting to the monthly reporting packages, um, the idea is to uh, not just be looking backwards, which is what the general ledger trial balance type information tends to do, 
It's really to be looking looking forward. And and really most of that information is not in the general ledger. Uh, as I said, you know, looking forward and, and what it's going to be, it's, it's a lot of that has to do with sales pipeline, has to do with inventory supplies, it has to do um, you know with sales backlog. Um, a lot of those a lot of those types of measures are really what, what management really wants to focus on. And what finance really wants to try and do, what you really want to try and do is finance, as the finance team, finance executives, is really be the one-stop source for that information. And if, you can, and if you can really provide that information in your finance report, and that's really how you move from the um, uh, kind of that accountant role uh, really into that financial leadership role. And that's really how you become, help yourself become relevant to the rest of management out, outside the finance organization. If they can look to you as, as the person who can provide the information they need to run the business day in and day out, uh, that's obviously key. Uh, I guess the other question we're seeing a, a lot, a lot related to is, is, you know, finance reporting off of the monthly cycle, uh, particularly on the on the BI side. Um, you know, should that information be provided on a daily basis? Uh, you know, with daily updates or weekly updates, or how, or how frequently should that be done? Um, clearly, uh, the more frequently that can be updated, the better. Now, some information, uh, you know, is not as not as useful on a daily basis, particularly some of the, the accounting information on the expense side and whatnot. Uh, but absolutely, to the extent that you can pull the information in, you and you want to do that related to you know things like sales and inventory pipeline, uh, shipments, a lot of that kind of information that is very very relevant. Um, you know, put the, have the systems in place, uh, which we work with all our clients, get some in place, to really inf update information even hourly or more frequently than that if, if the information is that dynamic. Um, yeah. It, yeah. Absolutely, John, absolutely I was just going to yeah. oh, right. oh, yeah. add, I mean, you know, if you can, typically when we're, we've got, a, you know, an implement going on, the, the data source, I saw there's a couple of questions on the data sources going in, what do you typically see? I mean, obviously, a trial balance going into the solution. Um, we'll see, you know, staffing roster from your HR system, so we'll get a, a very good uh, count of your head count. Typically, you know, things like John was mentioning, sales volume, you know, from your CRM, uh, you know, book sales, that kind of thing. Um, you might have square footage. Typically, it's not everything under the sun, but it's, you know, as you look forward in your business and you're looking at your key performance indicators, you know, anything that's, you know, numerator, denominator that, you know, needs to be in the solution, those things are, are typically, you know, captured and brought into into that to, to report upon. Yeah, great point, Brian. All right, with that, I think we'll wrap up today's webinar. Um, on the screen, you will see the presenters contact information. If you have any questions for John or Brian, feel free to sh uh, shoot them an email or give them a call. Um, as a reminder, all participants will receive instructions to access their certificate of completion, um, as well as copy of the materials and recording. And lastly, just as a reminder, we have a few questions for you as you exit the webinar pane, just so uh, we can continually improve on our webinars. But thank you so much, everyone, for attending, and have a great day.